Hello, I want to thank you for joining with me and I want to say thank you to all of you who believe in me and are praying for me. Some of my new friends I've been meeting on trips I've been taking. I mean, I've been going all over the place. Seattle, Washington, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, London, England. I mean, hey, we took Faith and Mascara to Pennsylvania, to the Amish country. I didn't really blend in very well there, but they received the word. And not only that, but I just want you to know that we have been reaching people from all different types of walks of life. I mean, a lady in her 70s was crying in my arms just saying, you mean God's not finished with me? I still have a plan. He still wants to use me. I've had people come up to me who were strippers, who were in violent relationships, hiding out in women's shelters. I mean, all types of situations. And they're just crying because they feel like they're still valuable. God still has a plan for their lives, which is what my ministry is all about. So I just want to say thank you for believing in me and praying for me. Please pray for me. <laughs> so I want to talk to you this whole month about your self-image. You know, one of my favorite verses is John 17, 4, and it simply says, I glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. In other words, God has an assignment for your life. He has a plan. I like to say he has a clipboard with your name on it, and he is fully expecting you to do something with your life here on earth. However, one of the ways that Satan will absolutely stop the plan of God for your life is by convincing you to have a poor self-image. You know, they actually did a study, mental health study, and found that one in four Americans are diagnosed each year with a psychological disorder for which poor self-image, low self-esteem are all the underlying factors. In other words, they said the majority of people's problems are they don't like themselves. And you know, I only know how to preach from experience because I did not like myself for so long. And you know, that's what I want to talk to you about this whole month is your self-image. What is your self-image? Well, your self-image is simply a portrait that you carry around of yourself. Now, I do not carry this around. <laughs> Hi, I'm Terry. Nice to meet you. No, I don't carry this around. But a, a self-image is a portrait that you carry around of yourself. It's the way you see yourself, and it's the way you believe other people see you. It doesn't mean it's right, but it's the way you see yourself. Now, you may have a distorted self-image. I know when I was in college, our professor had us draw a picture of the way we saw ourselves. I actually have a little sample here. That's the picture that I drew of myself. I mean, I just picked out everything I hated about myself. I hated my thighs. I hated my giant eyes, freckles. I'm not need. I mean, I drew just this distorted picture, and she said, many of you have a distorted self-image. <laughs> Well, I don't know how you see yourself, but I can tell you this. Satan wants you to see yourself beneath the way God sees you. He wants you to hate things about yourself. You know, from the time you were born, he sends a message to you that you're flawed, you're messed up, you're ugly, you're fat, you're worthless, you're trashy, you're a loser, whatever it is. He is constantly sending these messages that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not thin enough, you're not rich enough, whatever it is. He wants you to not like yourself. He wants you to compare yourself to other people and always feel like you just don't measure up. Well, once you've accepted a poor self-image, you make choices that agree, that support your beliefs about yourself. If you think you're trashy, you'll act trashy. I mean, you just, you make decisions that agree with how you see yourself. You behave in a manner consistent with how you see yourself. You know, I heard a story about a guy named Victor, and it said that when Victor was 15 years old, he was told from his teacher that he wouldn't amount to much and that he should just drop out of school and learn a trade. Well, since he was told he was an idiot, he acted like one for the next 17 years. Then when he was 32 years old, he found out he had an IQ of 161. <laughs> it says that since that time, he's written books, he's secured several patents, he's the chairman of a successful business, and he's chairman of the Mensa Society, which has the qualification of an IQ of 140 or higher. 
In other words, you behave in a manner consistent with how you see yourself. Now, why would you have a poor self-image? Well, it could be words that have been spoken over you by your parents, by teachers, by coaches, by an old boyfriend, an ex-husband, an ex-wife. Words do damage to your self-image like nothing else. It could be divorce. It could be abuse, abuse of all kinds. You know, sexual abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse. All types of abuse damage our self-image. Rejection, being compared to a sibling, turmoil in the home, marriage rejection, maybe your spouse cheated on you, could be rape, it could be all kinds of things. And like I said, from the time you're born, Satan's trying to tell you you're flawed, you're messed up, and he will use whatever situation he can to instill in you a poor self-image. Because if you don't value yourself, no one else will either. If you don't care about yourself, if you think you're trashy, then other people are going to treat you like trash. You know, T.D. Jake said, you can't take a person who feels ugly on the inside and make them feel pretty. He said they cannot retain the encouragement because they're leaking on the inside. Then he said, only the Word of God can get down on the inside of your soul and fix the plumbing <laughs> and transform your self-image. Only the Word of God can get down on the inside of you. It's not something that you do on the outside that's going to change your self-image. Yes, things can help, <laughs> but only the Word of God can get on the inside of you and transform the way you see yourself. Now, what I want you to learn this week is that Satan is after your self-image. He is the identity thief. You know, you hear about identity theft all the time. Satan is the identity th thief. And you know, when you have a poor self-image, let me just read this list to you of what a poor self-image will put you at risk for. Eating disorders, you know, people who have bulimia and anorexia, they never feel thin enough. No matter what the doctor says, no matter what the pictures or the scales say, they hate the way they look. Depression, suicide, criminal or violent behavior, drug and alcohol abuse, just trying to dull the pain that you feel about yourself inside spousal abuse you know you'll stay in an abusive situation when you have a poor self-image i know i did years ago spousal abuse poor job performance divorce repeatedly failed relationships always looking for that person who's going to make you happy because you're so unhappy with yourself um, focusing on the negative never able to accept compliments overly concerned about what others think you know you walk into a room and you just immediately think they're making fun of me. They're talking about me. That's just the result of a poor self-image. Always quitting things, resigning from things. If you ever feel like you start something, you don't finish. Start something, but you never finish. Those are all symptoms of someone with a poor self-image. Controlling, needy, success-driven, and a constant need for validation and recognition. Always having to be told, you're doing good, you look pretty, you're skinny. Well, God wants to heal you from the inside out. He doesn't want your value and your worth being determined by a person or by an experience. Why? Because Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose you. Before you were born, I set you apart for a special work. I want you to know that God has an assignment on your life, and He needs you so confident. He needs you to be so full of godly confidence that you you confidently walk out his plan, that you could care less what happened in your past, that you're free and now you're able to set others free. Now, I don't know what happened in your past, but God doesn't want you living back there when everything he has for you is up here. He has a plan for your life. So, you know, Gen General Douglas MacArthur, I think he's the one who said, one of the first and most important rules of war is you got to know your enemy. I want you to know that those people who hurt you or wounded you or made fun of you, rejected you, whatever it is, they are not your enemy. Satan is the enemy. Your war is with the devil, and he is after your self-image. Now, I want you to get this new message. If you relate to anything I'm talking about, I want you to get this message or get it for somebody you know. I have received more testimonies from this message than any of them I've ever preached before. And it's called Your Self-Image Affects Your Destiny. And I'm going to share with you seven things that you must know to build your self-image. And like I said, I preach from experience. So if God can transform me, trust me, He can do the same for you. So I want to thank you for watching this week. And I'm believing in Jesus' name that you're going to allow the Word of God to get down on the inside of you and completely transform the way you see yourself. 
I'll see you next week.